After the Battle of Eastern Solomons, the Americans had three active fleet carriers in the area, the Wasp, Saratoga and Hornet. Enterprise had to retreat due to heavy damage by the air attack. On August 31st, the Saratoga would be torpedoed by the Japanese submarine I-26 and was out of action for three months. On September 15th, another Japanese submarine attacked an American carrier task force, this time sinking the Wasp. This left Hornet as the only operational carrier in the South Pacific, but Henderson Field would also be able to provide air cover and small strikes. Convoys entered Solomon Islands and would resupply the Japanese army at night, the Allies naming these convoys the Tokyo Express. In mid-October, the two sides fought each other in the Battle of Cape Esperance, which was an American victory. Just two nights later, the Congo and Haruna successfully bombarded Henderson Field, destroying the majority of Allied aircraft stationed there. The Enterprise, which was still not in perfect shape, returned to the South Pacific, and the two Yorktown-class carriers prepared for another battle against the Japanese. On the other side, even though they lost a major chunk of the carrier force at Midway, the Imperial Japanese Navy still had a lot of ships to play with. These were the large Shokaku and Zuikaku, which were joined by the light carrier Zuiho, and they had the recently commissioned Junyo and Hio. Plan was to use these ships to finally destroy their opponents, and use the rest of the ships to bombard Allied positions and help out the army at retaking Henderson Field. But just before the battle, Hio had a fire in her engineering room on the 21st of October, just missing out of the battle. But the rest of the flat top still had more aircraft than their American counterparts, so they still went with the plan. The Japanese formed multiple fleets, two of them having carriers, and a vanguard force composed of destroyers, cruisers and fast battleships. The Americans sent out two task forces, each centered around one carrier. The South Dakota was sent to support the Enterprise. Additional fighters were added to the American carriers, as their experience so far suggested that their current fighter force was insufficient in case of large Japanese air attacks. On October 25th, a PBY Catalina dispatched from Santa Cruz found the Japanese carriers, which were just too far from the American carriers. These closed in and sent out a strike of 23 aircraft. The Japanese seeing the Catalina retreated, opening up the gap and denying any battle that day. The aircraft had to land in darkness, and some aircraft ditched or crashed on the flight deck. On the next day, the Japanese returned to the area and sent off multiple scouts, their counterparts doing the same thing. Just before 7 in the morning, a Japanese scout found Hornet's task force and a strike of 64 aircraft was dispatched, consisting of 21 Aichi D-382 dive bombers, 20 Nakajima B-5N torpedo bombers, and 21 A6N-30 fighters. About 40 minutes later, a couple of SBD dive bombers used as scouts found the light carrier Zuiho, while her fighters attacked other Allied aircraft in the area. The SBDs dived down and hit Zuiho with two 500-pound bombs. The carrier's flight deck was heavily damaged, and the ship could not land the aircraft. The Japanese Vanguard force was ordered to push forward to intercept American ships. At 10 past 8, the second wave of Japanese aircraft was sent off, consisting of 19 dive bombers, 16 torpedo bombers and 9 zeros. So by 9.10, the Japanese had 110 aircraft on their way to attack the US ships. The Americans would send off smaller waves of mixed air groups. Three waves were sent off from the two American ships, around 85 aircraft were in the air. Nine zeros from Zuiho attacked one of Enterprise's air group, exchanging heavy blows to both squadrons. At 8.50, a formation of Hornet's aircraft spotted the Vanguard force, but they pressed on. Wildcats were peeled away by zeros, and the remaining dive bombers found Shokaku, and at 9.27, Three up to six bombs hit the flight deck, causing serious damage to both the flight deck and the hangars. The six Avenger torpedo bombers of the group got separated and returned to Hornet after not fighting their targets. On their way back, they attacked the heavy cruiser Tone, but all torpedoes missed. Avengers from the second formation failed to find the carriers, and they attacked the heavy cruiser Suzuya instead, but these aircraft caused no damage. At about the same time, nine SBDs from the third formation found the heavy cruiser Chikoma hitting her with two 1,000 pound bombs, causing significant damage. More aircraft followed and attacked the same ship, and another bomb fell on the vessel. A torpedo also managed to hit it shortly after. Radar from Hornet's task force sighted the first Japanese wave. 37 Wildcats were dispatched, and the first wave spotted Hornet and began its attack. At 9.09, .09, the anti-aircraft guns opened fire. Bombs started to fall down on the Hornet, three of them managing to hit the carrier as it was turning away from the approaching torpedo bombers. The torpedo bombers split into two groups and attacked Hornet, hitting her with two torpedoes. A pair of dive bombers also crashed on Hornet, causing further damage and left Hornet dead in the water. The Japanese force lost 12 dive bombers, 10 torpedo bombers and at least one zero, while the Americans lost 6 wildcats. By 10 in the morning, 
The fires on Hornet were put out, and the cruiser Northampton managed to rig a tow line to get the carrier as far from the Japanese as possible. At around 9.30, the Enterprise's radar spotted the second Japanese wave, which was heading their way. One of the damaged TBF Avengers ditched near the destroyer Porter, and it is possible that the Avengers torpedo hit Porter. The destroyer was later scuttled due to heavy damage. The second wave received information about the location of Enterprise, as the task force emerged from a rain squall. The combat air patrol had trouble intercepting the Japanese aircraft, and the dive bombers pressed their attacks in two formations. The first achieved no hits, but the other formation managed to hit Enterprise with two 250kg semi-armor piercing bombs. About 20 minutes later, the 16 torpedo bombers arrived and split up to attack Enterprise, South Dakota and Portland, scoring no hits. A damaged torpedo bomber crashed into the destroyer Smith, setting the ship on fire. Another strike was launched from the Japanese carriers, this time from Junio. At around 9.15, the strike composed of 17 dive bombers and 12 fighters was launched and also found Enterprise, but they split up, attacking Enterprise, South Dakota and the cruiser San Juan, hitting South Dakota and San Juan once. Eight of the 17 dive bombers were shot down, and three more were ditched. At around 11.30, Admiral Kincaid decided to withdraw Enterprise, leaving Hornet behind. Between 11.30 and 1400 hours, the two undamaged Japanese carriers, the Zuikaku and Junior, recovered the surviving aircraft and prepared follow-up strikes. The Japanese pilots reported that the American ships vastly improved their anti-aircraft capability. One of Junior's bomb leaders appeared so shaken that at times he could not speak coherently. At just over one in the afternoon, Junior sent off a strike of seven torpedo bombers and eight zeros, while at the same time, the Zuikaku launched a strike of seven torpedo bombers armed with 800kg armor-piercing bombs, two dive bombers and five zeros. At 1535, the last strike was launched from Junio, consisting of four dive bombers and six zeros. Northampton towed Hornet at the speed of five knots, and at 1520, Junior's second strike arrived over Hornet, and one torpedo managed to hit Hornet while the rest missed. Zuikaku's strike arrived shortly after, and an 800kg bomb also penetrated Hornet's flight deck. During the last Japanese attack of the day, one bomb from Junior's strike hit Hornet at around 1720. Two American destroyers were ordered to scuttle Hornet, and despite hitting her with over 400 shells and multiple torpedoes, Hornet remained afloat. The Japanese surface forces were closing in and the destroyers left Hornet. Two Japanese destroyers arrived and finished off Hornet with four long lance torpedoes. During the retreat, the destroyer Mahan and the battleship South Dakota collided, heavily damaging Mahan. Both sides claimed victory. The Americans stated that two Shokaku class carriers were hit and eliminated, and Admiral Kincaid's summary of damage to the Japanese vessels included hits to a battleship, three heavy cruisers, one light cruiser and possible hits on another heavy cruiser. In reality though, no Japanese ship sank, but the carriers Shokaku and Zuiko were heavily damaged, and the cruiser Chikuma was badly damaged as well. The Japanese claimed they sank three American carriers, a battleship, a cruiser, a destroyer and one unidentified large warship. Actual losses were the carrier Hornet and the destroyer Porter, and the Enterprise, South Dakota, San Juan and Smith were damaged. The US lost 81 aircraft and the Japanese lost 99 aircraft. As the Enterprise sailed back, the crew posted a sign on the flight deck, Enterprise vs Japan. Enterprise received temporary repairs at New Caledonia and returned to the South Pacific. This was a Japanese victory. Although the losses of Japanese aircraft significantly decreased future Japanese aerial operations.